Yes, well, I, I worked on the docks in Liverpool for five years as an apprentice electrician and then got sort of break playing for Southport and then Barrow, who have both gone out of the Football League now. Um, and then I got an offer to go to South Africa, which I took and we just up and went. All the people in Liverpool couldn't believe it. They were saying to me, why are you leaving? And I said, because I want to be a footballer. My name is Peter Wyth. I was signed by Aston Villa for half a million pounds. And in my first season here, probably one of the things that people remember me, I scored 20 league goals. And then the following year, of course, we won the European Cup. And I managed to score the winning goal when we beat Bayern Munich 1-0. People are always asking me what it felt like to score this goal. Well, it's hard to describe because it's just utopia to score that goal and for us to continue with the trend of British teams winning the European Cup. It was a tremendous achievement by all the team, but it was great for me to knock the winning goal in, in the 62nd minute. Still hanging on at nil nil. Mortimer, Shaw, Williams prepared to adventure down the left. There's a good ball played in for Tony Morley. Oh, yes, it is! Peter Will! Villa in the lead! It's, it's ironic, really, but that was the one I never won, which is the FA Cup, which Villa had set the record with regards to how many times they'd won it. The closest I got was uh, the quarter-final. Um, and of course this one, I managed to win it twice. So I played for Nottingham Forest and we won that trophy. And then Nottingham Forest, after I left them, won that trophy twice. So everyone was thinking at the time, you know, you've, you've missed out. But I hadn't missed out really. And then, uh, in 1982, managed to get my hands on that one, so two out of three is not bad, really. My seat, if we look here, um, I used to get changed right in the, in the corner. So if you look sort of, I was, say for instance, I'd be there. So I was always in the corner and it was always put out in numbers. So number nine was always right here in the corner. Um, so it went down nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, and then t nine was here, 10, 11. Uh, and the substitute, because we only had one substitute was there. So yeah, I used to get changed in the corner. That's when we all come together. And if you look at that stadium, it was full, absolutely rammed. Sheffield United, that game was. Well, <clears throat> the year that I had when I come to Aston Villa um, was we won the championship. I remember Ron Saunders calling me in his office and saying, and the season was finished. And we were going on a, we were going on a trip to uh, America. The team was all going on a trip to America with the wives and family. And he called me in the office and he said, um, how do you fancy playing another game? And, and I thought to myself, oh, playing the testimonial or something like that. And he said, how would you like to play up front with Kevin Keegan? So I thought, oh, I says, yeah, wouldn't mind. So he said, uh, you've been called up to England and you're going to make your debut against Brazil and you're playing up front with Kevin Keegan. Sadly, that, that didn't happen, Kevin was injured. But I made my debut against Brazil, the ripe old age of 29 was brilliant. And I stayed from 29 right up to 34. Well, after I always wanted to stay in the game and I always wanted to coach and, and uh, I, I was given my first opportunity at Huddersfield Town. And then when I was at Huddersfield, I got a phone call from Steve Stride 
Joseph Venglos had come here as manager and Steve had rang me and said, would I consider coming back as assistant manager? I don't know why he'd done that really, because there was a, it was a no boner really. I wanted to, I'd come back to the football club under any circumstances. And then I'd sort of gone to reserve team coach when Ron Atkinson had come in and then um, Brian come in. So we, we sort of, I was still, I was involved with the Aston Villa for five years off and on um, as, a, as a management side. But then I got an opportunity to go as a national coach. Uh, didn't know where it was, just had an interview and said that I was going to somewhere in Asia and then found out I was going to Thailand. So I ended up being very successful for five years. I stayed in Thailand for five years, which was a phenomenal achievement for everyone because normally coaches don't last that long. And then I went to um, Indonesia and I coached there for three and a half years. I've changed sort of with regards to everything that I've done. So, I'm, I, you know, it's like football. You never, if you think you know it all, you don't know it all. And it's the same in management and coaching. You just keep on growing and growing and growing. And that to me happens. So I'm just doing the same things really. I'm just trying to keep up, go and see players, watch as many games as what I possibly can and come and see as many you know, games as what I, I, I do all over the country. We all want you know, this club to grow and to get better. And I think with the appointments that they've had and, uh, and now making the appointment of Steve Bruce, who's, who's got a lot of knowledge um, at this level and got promotion and, and, and done well to get into the championship with other teams, there's every possibility that this squad could push for, you know, promotion and that's what everyone wants with this football team.